The same tapping noise drew us into the bathroom for a second time, but this time it was accompanied by the sound of the door vibrating. Um, but we kind of wrote it off that it would have been somebody opening or closing their hotel room door and kind of shook ours by, you know, sending a draft down the hallway. Something that's a lot harder to explain is something you probably missed, just like I almost missed during editing. And that's when Jordan walked into the bathroom for the second time. He didn't have a reflection in the mirror. Welcome to episode two of Slasher Season on Paranormies. We hope you enjoyed last week's episode, Hangman's Church Part 3. If you haven't seen it yet, go back and watch it after you're done watching this video. Congratulations to the winner of that video, James Viola, for finding our sponsor, Spirit Tech's logo, hidden in the video. The Spirit Tech logo will be hidden in this video as well. And if you're the first to find it, leave a comment with the timestamp and we will pin your comment at the top and give you a shout out in the next video as well. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell so you don't miss an upload. Don't forget to like the video, crack a farmery. Let's get it. Sleep paralysis affects an estimated 8% of the total human population. It's described as a gray area between being wide awake and experiencing the most terrifying nightmare that you can imagine. You open your eyes to a pitch black room, feeling a pressure on your chest and sensing a dark presence in the room. You try to get up, but can't move. You try to scream for help, but can't talk. Your only option is to lay there in horror, completely at the mercy of the terrifying tricks your mind chooses to play on you. Some people who suffer from sleep paralysis have reported seeing a sleep paralysis demon that haunts them in the night. This sleep paralysis demon is thought to be a malicious entity known as the Mare. In Old English and Scandinavian mythology, the Mare would sit on your chest while you slept, which would bring on terrifying nightmares. In fact, this is where the word nightmare comes from. Some still believe that the pressure you feel on your chest during a sleep paralysis episode is in fact the Mare sitting on you, bringing on the horrifying dreams you are about to witness. A fan of ours from Calgary named Christina told us about a very terrifying sleep paralysis episode that she experienced while staying at the Norwood Hotel in Winnipeg. However, what she experienced seemed to be something more than most people experience. She seemed to have a real run-in with something supernatural. The Norwood Hotel is not a hotel you will find on any top 10 haunted places in Winnipeg list, but through the years we have heard one or two stories through the grapevine from people who claim they've experienced paranormal activity at the hotel. Things like elevator doors opening and closing on their own, and audible chatter coming through the locked bar doors. We never really thought twice about it, but it wasn't until this story, which we found so fascinating, that made us wonder what sort of entity might be lurking in the hotel. In 2008, Christina was in Winnipeg for a convention at the Winnipeg Convention Center with a few colleagues. She was in her early 20s at the time and still fairly new to her company. Christina checked in late Tuesday evening at the Norwood Hotel for two nights, totally exhausted as she'd been driving since the early morning to get to Winnipeg at a decent time. She got to her room and got ready for bed almost immediately. Before bed, Christina called her boyfriend. She recalls telling him the small details about her trip, like the moose she saw on the Trans-Canada Highway and where she stopped for lunch. But the phone call didn't last long. She had a big day at the convention the next morning, so she said, I love you, hung up the phone, and went to bed. Christina opened her eyes around 2 a.m. and realized that her body was completely paralyzed. Christina was sleeping on her side towards the door to her room, and there, peeking around the corner, she could make out in complete darkness a man with the most evil and sinister grin on his face just staring at her. She tried to scream, but no sound came out. She tried to get up and run, but her legs did not obey her. She could only lay there and watch the man around the corner, feeling the sheer terror of the situation. She tried unsuccessfully again to scream, and the man put his finger in front of his mouth as if to shush her. 
This is the last thing she remembers before again passing out. Christina woke six hours later. She was so shaken that she vomited almost immediately upon waking. She looked around the room and there was no sign that anyone had been in her hotel room and the door was still double locked with the deadbolt. She called her boyfriend and told him what had happened. He told her that she likely just experienced an episode of sleep paralysis. Christina had never experienced sleep paralysis before and insisted that the man in her room was real. Her boyfriend reassured her that during sleep paralysis episodes, people tend to hallucinate. He even shared a story with her about when he experienced sleep paralysis as a child when he saw a tiger walk into his room. Her boyfriend was able to calm her down and Christina had to leave for the convention soon, so she hung up the phone and got ready. Throughout the day, she couldn't shake the awful feeling in her stomach that she woke up with, the feeling that she experienced something terrible and that it would happen again that night. Christina didn't want to return to her room, but since she was still new at her company, she didn't want to be a bother and ask them to book her at a new hotel on such short notice. That night, she called her boyfriend before bed again. She didn't want to end the call and she was terrified of falling asleep again. Fearing that she would experience the same terrifying nightmare again, she talked to him for hours until she couldn't keep her eyes open anymore. That night, Christina did have a nightmare, but did not experience the same sleep paralysis episode as the previous night. Instead, she dreamt that she saw a man on fire floating outside of her hotel room window. The dream was short-lived because almost as quickly as it started, she woke up to her boyfriend calling her. He was hysterical on the phone. He just had a dream that a man broke into her hotel room and did all sorts of horrific things to her. Christina had never heard her boyfriend in hysterics like this. Christina was already shaken from the dream that she just had, as well as the sleep paralysis episode from the night before, and this was more than she could take. She hung up the phone, grabbed her keys off the nightstand, and drove away for the night. She ended up in a McDonald's parking lot, where she managed to sleep in her car for a few hours until sunrise. Christina had intended to head back to Calgary that morning, so she headed back to the hotel to grab her things so she could get back on the road. What she found when she got to the hotel absolutely shocked her. The door to her room appeared to be slightly dented in. When she walked in, she saw that the window was wide open and the screen was on the floor. Her suitcase was rummaged through, but nothing was missing except for a few items of clothing she had left on the bathroom floor after showering the night before. She grabbed her things, checked out, and started the drive back home. After she left the city, she stopped at a gas station to call her boyfriend. She told him about everything that she had found back at her hotel room and thanked him for calling because if he hadn't have called, there's no telling if she'd even be alive right now. But his response made her blood run cold. He told her that he had no recollection of making the call he checked his recent calls on his cell phone, but had no recent calls since he talked her to sleep the night before. When she checked her recent calls, she realized that her last call was to her boyfriend, but it was when she called him before bed the night before while afraid to fall asleep. Christina still doesn't know what to make of this event. She has not experienced sleep paralysis since and has never stayed in a hotel room by herself again. Was there some sort of evil entity in the room foreshadowing what would happen to her? Was it really her boyfriend that called her, or was something trying to warn her and get her to leave? Was the man in her sleep paralysis episode real? Was he the same man that broke into her room the second night? Christina never forgot her room number. She left the hotel in such a hurry that she still had one hotel key in her back pocket with the number 313 on it. We stayed in room 313 at the Norwood Hotel to try to find some answers for Christina. I said here. We're here because a woman named Christina said she had an experience in this room. Do you remember her? One say. Started with a D. Can you say that again? Oh, K two just went off. Going off. Modern. 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 Is the hotel more modern since since she was here? It must have been. It was 
like 13 years ago. I think she said 2008. If you've been with us for a long time, you'll have noticed that we didn't use our spirit box for anything other than sensory deprivations for last season. And we really wanted to bring it back this season, but we wanted to bring it back without the annoying static that you hear uh, from a spirit box just by himself. So what we did is we hooked it up to a guitar noise gate pedal and you can set the threshold so that you, it cuts out all the static and you can still hear the words coming through. And after that, we hooked it up to our JBL speaker just to amplify it so we can hear the words a little bit clearer. She said that she saw you in her sleep. Were you trying to warn her or were you... That was weird. Were you evil? Were you evil? Were you evil? Mom, sound like? It said okay. Okay. Mom, okay. Kid. Okay, so that's weird. It said this mom. This one said mom. That one said August okay. Said kid. And then, you see, this is one another thing we was, we were going to try and do is we we're going to try and get the ovulus and the spirit box to see if two entities could have a conversation with each other. Yeah, and we so far we got mom and we got kid over here. Yeah, mom. Is okay, that kid? So is that your mom <clears throat> on the spirit box? If you don't want to answer our questions, we've got all kinds of devices that you can touch to let us know. You can touch the REM pod, the K2 meter here. Or you can come in here and go in front of this doll. Remember, do you remember Christina? She stayed here a long time ago. She was very scared. She woke up in the middle of the night and she saw something staring at her. Do you remember that? Was that you? If you have anything to say, now is the time to say it. Wow. Sound like hello. That was almost another hello. Diabolical. She, I mean, she, she described that as a, like a sinister being yeah. staring at her. Isabella, is, is that your name? I don't know what's going on here. It said mom before, is that? Is the mom's name Isabella? Rage. Rage. There's some pretty nasty words you're saying. Diabolical rage. So I'm trying to put the story together and I'm wondering, I was wondering if what she saw was trying to scare her away for her own good, but it sounds like that's you who was scaring her. Maybe you did mean her some harm, is that right? If so, touch the REM pod. Oh, did the K2 just go off? Did it? Yeah, it is. Just went off a couple times. If that's you, do it again. Or could you please do it again? Come and just touch it. What are you thinking so far? I'm thinking that it could have just been a sleep paralysis episode.
You know? It could have been wrong. It sounded like wrong. And it won't focus on you. Really? Now it is. For some reason, it won't. Yeah, it wouldn't focus on you. So maybe we gotta listen to the spirit box more. Was it just not? Was it not just a uh, sleep paralysis episode? Wrong again. Come and touch this REM pod. Lay? Like laying in the bed. Lay in the bed? You want me to lay in the bed? Yeah, lay in the bed. Okay. I'm going to get the SLS. Okay. <sighs> what did it say? It said yo. Yo. <laughs> yo. How are you doing? Lasting. Well, I'm hoping you can make a lasting impression on me. I heard a noise over here. I heard it too. Ledge. Ledge? Ledge? Are you on the ledge? There is a ledge like outside. There's a ledge window. right out right here outside. There is a ledge there. Didn't she say she thought somebody came into her room? Yeah. Is it possible that somebody climbed up that ledge? I mean, it's pretty high up from where that is, but I guess it could be possible. Okay, why isn't this working? It won't even pick you up. It won't pick me up? No. If I like, go like this? Language. Nope, it won't pick you up. Really? That's weird. It wouldn't, it's like, what the hell's going on? It wouldn't, it was blurring you out. Is there something around me right now? Is there something around me right now? Is there something around me right now? That's interfering with the electronics? It won't pick Jordan up. What would it say? It's like, I can't quite make it out what it's saying. I'm hearing words over there. Is. There is something around you? There is something. The doll won't go off. Jordan. What? Come look. The doll won't go off. We just changed batteries. Look at this. Wow. Usually she doesn't shut up. Uh, what? You walk in front of me. Okay, hang on. Stay there. Flip it around. I want to just keep this in one shot to see. Well, what? There she goes. Ooh. But she's not making any she's noise. She's not making any noise. That is weird. She's not saying anything. Whoa. She's just not saying anything anymore. Yeah, like I said, like usually she just... She doesn't shut up. There is no setting for audio. It's just on and off. Like she always that's says, that's super weird. On. on, on. It just said Look. on. She just did it again. Now is she gonna go? Oh my god. Oh. That one had force. I wonder if it's controlling Perhaps. the doll. Oh, I got bad it said on, right? and then yeah, because why else would it not make any noise? What? U UK. That was weird. So, okay, Jordan, here's one thought. Here's mm -hmm. one thing. Because what? when I turned the light on, it turned on, so it's probably yeah. light activated. But then, now it's, look at it now. 
Now it's going off. Why yeah. did I do it before when the lights are? And it was on the whole time. Yeah, I don't know. What the? Do hell? you like our doll? You can play with the doll if you want. I don't like that thing anymore. Dash. 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 Dollars. Dash like run should we oh, run? Oh man, it's got a weird feeling in here now a bit. Diabolical. Again. Again. I don't think show, I've, show us something diabolical then. I don't think I've ever heard that word on this app before and said it twice in one night. I've, yeah, I've never heard that word come through ever. Show us something diabolical. See, the thing is with this one, it's hard to decide whether you want to be disrespectful or respectful because what is it? Yeah, we really don't know. It's like we have one, one anecdotal story, you know. So can we talk a bit? Yes, we could. We don't normally do this, but we're going to do it just to see. Um, do you hear that? Is that you? I'm not sure. I shuffle on the bed like a little it, bit. It sounded like it came from back over here, though. Yeah, that oh, was Okay, me. that was you. Yeah. Ooh, that sounded bad. Um, is it, yeah, I don't like doing this very much. <coughs> we don't like doing this, but if you're here, do something. Show us how strong you are because it doesn't seem like you're very strong at all. Got. Show us what you got then. Yeah. You do have something? Diabolical. Again. Again. A third time. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. Okay. You think you're diabolical? Show me something diabolical. That was loud, hey? Sound like it said Michael. Michael. That's a creepy. I don't. That name just reminds me of Michael Myers. Show us how diabolic you are to touch that device right there, that REM pod. In the bathtub. Can we give it some light here? Mm -hmm. What is this uh -oh. thing? Is this where you've been hiding? That is really creepy. Yeah, just I'm looking nothing. behind there. It's there's nothing there. There's nothing there. That's just like the, it's like sitting in the corner of the tub. You hiding? One of the really great things about our new SLS camera that we got from Spiritech is that it's a lot less sensitive to just random objects around the room than our previous uh, phone app SLS was. And no different was when we found it was some kind of a figure sitting, it looked like it was sitting on the corner of the bathtub or something. And an SLS camera should only work when there's light in the room, but we shut the lights off in the bathroom and it was still picking up that figure which absolutely should not happen. And what was really convincing and really scary was when we asked it to move its arms or move its leg or something and it obeyed our commands, which was, it was really crazy. Can you wave? Can you wave to us or move your legs? It's waving. Question. Move oh, its legs. Oh, dude. It's waving, look at its hand. Mm-hmm. Do you have a question for us? Thank you for showing us that you're here. This is this is what we wanted, just to see you. It's moving its leg like we asked. Is there, a, is there something that you want us to, to know or to tell somebody? It's given so many names that it would be hard to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for, much for showing us that you are here. 
and doing what we ask to. Oh, it keeps moving its legs still. That's so cool, mm -hmm. man. It's moving its hands and its legs like we asked. Look, you got a pretty long arm there. It almost sounded like a kid's voice in the yeah, spirit box. Whoa. Not sure if the mics are picking it up from here, but we can still hear the spirit box and the ovulus from where we are. We decided to place the motion activated balls on the same bed that Christina slept in back in 2008. Beforehand, we tested the sensitivity of these balls and they are so sensitive to the human touch that even if you were to shake the bed, um, stomp on the floor and make some vibration, they will not go off. It's just when you touch them. Um, so what happened next was very convincing evidence to us that there was some kind of paranormal activity going on. Okay, the obvious one. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Well, if there's anything here, still, come and touch these motion-activated balls. There's some new toys for you to play with, but if you'd prefer... These will light up like this. Yeah. If you touch one. And we still have a REM pod mm -hmm. set up over here. You can touch any one of those. Oh, this is just dead. Oh, oh, whoa. Whoa. Thank you. I didn't... Scare? Scare. I did not expect that. <clears throat> no, man. Like it hasn't even touched the REM pod yet. Oh, my Can God. You... I just saw a shadow behind you. Really? Yep. Should I look? Yeah, look. I saw it by the bathroom over there. It wasn't my shadow? Nope. He was just casting over there to the to my right. If that was you. Can you touch the ball one more time? That was wild. I mean, that's a little bit unnerving knowing there's a shadow behind me somewhere. These have never lit up. Remember when we were placing them before? Yeah. Yeah, we were trying to see if anything else might do it, but you actually have to touch Labor. them. What? Laborer. What's that noise? You hear that? Yeah, it sounds like tapping. What is that? Is that the shadow behind me? Shh. You hear that? Yeah, it sounds like like water, like tap, a water tap. Who's that? It was a blood. Not long after the motion ball lit up, we both heard tapping coming from inside the bathroom. Um, the closer we got, it almost sounded like water dripping, but we checked that and it sounded like it was tapping on the wall. Can you do that again? Light up that REM pod one more time. Or move one of these balls. Oh, that scared me. Mm. What? I. It was you? You're saying it was you. It was you who, who did that. Who are you? Can you tell me? I mean, we've heard so many names, but we don't know which one you are. You lit up the ball. You lit up the REM pod. Can you do it again? One or the other or both at the same time. Oh, that was freaky. What is that noise? You hear it still? It's like a tapping. I'll check it out. Heavy. Heavy? You hear it still? 
I can still hear it from here. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure where it's coming from. It almost sounds like, yeah, like, like water. Oh my God. by if somebody slammed their door, but I didn't hear oh, a door slam no. I didn't hear a door slam, did you? No. When we were in the bathroom trying to pinpoint the source of the sounds. I had a strong feeling that whatever was causing the tapping noise might have been the figure that we caught on the SLS camera earlier. Um, but we didn't really have a whole lot of time to test that theory because another sound drew us back into the other room. The same tapping noise drew us into the bathroom for a second time but this time it was accompanied by the sound of the door vibrating. Um, but we kind of wrote it off that it would have been somebody opening or closing their hotel room door and kind of shook ours by you know, sending a draft down the hallway. Something that's a lot harder to explain is something you probably missed, just like I almost missed during editing. And that's when Jordan walked into the bathroom for the second time. He didn't have a reflection in the mirror. Um, and I don't understand cameras very well, so I don't understand if this is a FPS issue with the camera during that moment um, for low light sensitivity. I don't know how that all works, so I don't know. But if that's not the case, then I came up with a theory and I'll share that. Jordan wasn't being picked up by the SLS camera throughout the night and it wouldn't focus on his face specifically a lot throughout the night. And we kind of were talking about the possibility that there was something latching onto him or you know just lingering around him that night and i think it's possible that when jordan passed by the mirror the second time that something was either standing in front of the mirror blocking his reflection or it was something walking with jordan to the bathroom either way it's really unsettling and it's probably one of the best pieces of footage that i think we've ever caught Normally we don't leave a location in the middle of the night, but because we were in the city, we decided we were gonna go out and grab something to eat. Um, and then we brought our food back and decided we were gonna watch the Haunted Sides live stream. If you were watching the Haunted Sides live stream, you would already know what's gonna happen. But around 2.33 in the morning, we got a phone call to our hotel room. At any time, it feels like they're about to say something to us. It shuts the whole house. Yeah, In the morning, Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you breathing. That's not good. Okay, bye. Just somebody breathing. Yeah, I can just hear them breathing. While we're watching their live, who even like knows that we're here though? Nobody. Look at that. While we're watching Haunted Sides live, too. Nobody knows we're here. Unless somebody saw us downstairs. Well, I guess that's a possibility. How do they know it's rumored? I don't know. When I went downstairs, the security guard was sleeping. Oh, yeah, that's what you were saying. Yeah. He was dead asleep. But still, how is him? That's what I mean, is. Yeah. Something that I don't really talk about a whole lot is that I actually experience sleep paralysis from time to time. I've never really had like the really scary like hallucinations. Most of the time, it's just, you know, I wake up and I can't move. And usually like by now I know what's going on and I can just kind of like wiggle my fingers and my toes and I can, I can wake up from it pretty quick. But it's always really scary when it happens to me. But this was the reason we decided that I would sleep in the same bed that Christina stayed in because since I'm more prone to sleep paralysis, 
that maybe I would be able to see the same thing that she saw that night and be able to corroborate her story. Some of the strange events that happened in room 313 are far different from the paranormal activity that we've seen in the past. The fact that my reflection didn't show up in the mirror, it messed with me for a couple of days because on one hand, like it's so cool, and then on the other hand, you just don't really know what it means. And it just kind of goes to show that paranormal activity could be happening in your own house right beside you and you would have no idea because you're just looking the other way. The Norwood Hotel was a place that we almost wrote off because the stories we heard before were not that impactful, but we're glad that Christina came forward with this story because it led to one of the best pieces of footage we've ever caught, given that it's not a camera glitch. It's hard to say what Christina was dealing with during her stay at the Norwood in 2008, and we'll never be able to explain that life-saving phone call that she received, but we're happy to share our findings with her just to give her some peace of mind knowing that she's not the only one that experienced strange events in room 313. Thanks for watching the video. If you remembered to look for the Spirit Tech logo, make sure you put the timestamp in the comments so we can pin it up top and we'll give you a shout out in the next video. If you figured out which classic slasher that this episode was a tribute to, let us know on any of our socials. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Our new upload day will be Monday, so we'll see you next Monday.